Hey, Joe Gilder here. If you still struggle with EQ and you're not quite sure what the different frequencies sound like, I've got an exercise that you can do in Studio One that will absolutely change the game for you. So I want you to open up a blank session in Studio One and just bring in a stereo f mix of something. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, maybe your favorite song, maybe something that you've released. Just bring in a song and drop it into Studio One. Next, I want you to drag an EQ onto that track. Now, for what I'm going to show you in this video, you need to have Pro EQ 3. This is the newest version of Pro EQ that came out with Studio One version 6. Uh, you won't have the thing I'm going to show you unless you have version 3. Uh, by the way, if you become a Studio One Plus member, you get the latest version of Studio One always, as long as you're a member. So that might be an option for you if you want to have this. So the idea here is I can, with any EQ, I could come in and do something like this. I could listen to a mix. I could boost a certain group of frequencies, and then I can sweep up and down to help familiarize myself with what the different frequency chunks sound like, right? Here's what that would sound like. Okay, so it's it's helpful, certainly better than nothing. You can go in and really just study each of those ranges, right? What does 50 hertz sound like versus 100 hertz, so on and so forth. Problem with that is while we're able to hear that group of frequencies boosted, we're still hearing everything else, right? When I boost the mid-range, I'm hearing the mid-range boosted, but I'm still hearing the lows and the highs. So it can sometimes be hard to really know what those groups sound like. Um, now, let me show you this. In the old days, before Pro EQ version 3 came out, this was the way I would deal with it. I would duplicate the track. I would take the second track, flip the polarity of it. I'd put an EQ on both tracks just to make sure there were no phase differences. So if, in case you didn't know, if you flip the polarity of two identical sources, you'll hit play and nothing will happen. Right? There's playback happening here and here, but we're not hearing it because they're completely canceling each other out. Which means we're basically hearing... We're hearing whatever is different between the two. And right now, there's no difference. We could come in with an EQ, and we could like boost to certain frequencies, and then that's the only thing that we'll hear. OK, so that's the old, kind of convoluted, confusing way of doing this. We don't have to do that anymore. I wanted to show you that because I've taught that before. And if you saw one of those old videos where I showed you that, that'll look familiar. But now, we don't have to do anything like that. We can just open up Pro EQ 3. Let's choose our mid-band here and just press this right here. This is solo mode for a particular band of EQ. So as soon as I press solo, it turns into this number, which is kind of like a low and a high pass filter. I can adjust the width of it to my liking. And then I can just drag this around and I'm only hearing what's inside this cone of trust, <laughs> so to speak. So here's what that sounds like. Even, even right now while doing that, I'm readily, I'm always learning as well. So I'm readily fascinated by like the difference today between like two and three K, three and five K is such a vast difference. And it's hard to recognize that if you're not, if you don't let yourself zoom into this level and only hear a certain group of frequencies. So what is happening here? This is a part of the new dynamic EQ mode that you can run with Pro EQ 3. Dynamic EQ is is like a kind of a hybrid of it's sort of like multiband compression but it's done inside of an EQ. It's a really handy tool, but I'm not using any of that. I'm just using this solo mode to hear these different ranges. Don't go super narrow because that can sound weird no matter what frequency you're at, but something like this and just spend some time just meandering over a mix or even a group of tracks or a drum mix, anything you want. And you'll start to notice immediately, oh, when I go from 100 to 50, here are the things that I hear. And if you do this enough, you'll start to remember these things and recall these things in your next mix, and your mixes will start to sound better. You'll be better able to identify the problems and then go and find them rather than just kind of pulling up an EQ, crossing your fingers, and hoping for the best. Go try this on a mix. Let us know how it works in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.